Putting on a show at Red Rocks has been one of my all-time goals ever since I started in the production industry as a lighting programmer and operator. This is one of the world's most renowned venues, and putting on a show here really means something. I've been working with the good friends of mine on the Zomboy crew ever since we went on tour together last summer, and I was elated that they wanted to bring me on board for more of their one-offs, uh, including this one. Seems all right. We're here out at Red Rocks doing Global Dub Fest with Zomboy, and we've got our ground package hidden away back here, provided by Brown Note Productions. Bunch of ACL 360 bars, some shappies, and of course the GLP JDC ones that I did a video on with Christy Lights. I ran into kind of an unexpected problem here. Just lands in my USB. Uh, but that's nothing that a pair of tweezers can't fix. So this is my first time at Red Rocks. We got a two hour programming slot. Jeremy is here, gonna be doing the VJ thing and our ground package is ready to roll out, get plugged in, we'll flash it, do some positions and make some fun stuff while we're programming. And then, uh, then the show doors open and then we've got quite a while before We'll have to be back for the show. Home sweet home. I use a pretty standard workflow when I go to do a programming session at one of these shows. Once the local production crew has everything set up and ready to roll, I basically go through the patch, make sure all the lights that are in the patch actually exist in real life because you wouldn't believe how many things get cut and uh, changed and you're never really filled in on until you get to the show and start programming. Uh, and then after that, I go through and make sure all of my moving lights are behaving in a way that works with my programming style. That basically means flipping and uh, doing all sort of sorts of DMX and inversion in the patch so that if I grab all my fixtures, regardless if they are hanging or if they are ground stacked, uh, they will all pan left, pan right according to DMX values, which means that all of the effects will all work. And then after I make sure they're all behaving the way I expect, uh, then I go through and I update all of my position presets, any sort of gobo focusing presets, and um, make a couple of cool positions that are not uh, based off of my effects generator stuff. My general rule of thumb is anything that I can program using my layout views or just values in the fixture profile itself, I'm not gonna bother with spending valuable rig time on them. It can feel a little bit like a losing battle when you're programming a ground package that is on casters that's gonna be rolling away, especially when it's in so many pieces like this. Uh, they were using this uh, Tyler GT truss on wheels um, and they're all modular pieces. So each truss was its own piece that can be tilted or panned in uh, its own direction. So trying to focus all the moving lights on a rig like that, uh, it kind of doesn't really matter. You, as long as you get the basics down, um, you know, you won't be able to do the fine detail type positions with that ground package. And by far the hardest part was lining up all of the ACL 360 bars. Those are the Elation Infinite Pan Infinite Tilts, seven pixel uh, RGB cell bar things. <laughs> and the reason why it's so hard is because the acceleration on them is actually pretty slow. Once they get up and going to speed, then um, you know they're really quick. But it, as far as like fine tuning pan and tilt start positions, uh, you actually, as soon as you move the encoder, you have to wait probably about a half second or full second to see the full resulting movement on each of uh, each of the fixtures. I, in fact, I will put up a little screenshot of the layout view for this particular show. Um, actually, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll probably just put the whole show file up online. So if you want to play around with it, you can check out my Patreon for that. So all of the infinite pan tilt fixtures are yoked out 90 degrees, and that's so that we can get the infinite pan, you know, circular look, off-center dot gobo look, all that kind of stuff um, easily. And it's kind of pointless to do any sort of positions without a really good start position. So my start position was just a straight line of all of these ACL bars. And it 
was pretty much a big pain in the ass to try to get that lined up perfectly. I got as close as I could, and um, I think the results were pretty good, but I wish I would have had a little more time to make it perfect perfect. And with the way they were mounted on the truss, I ended up using uh, one of the tricks that I showed you guys in an earlier video, and that is how to invert the RGB cells in a multi-instance fixture. So if you want to see how to do that, click on the annotation on the screen. Where do I go? Oh, this way? The famous tunnel? I mean, I've seen better tunnel. <laughs> oh, this is really cool. The famous, world famous. Yeah. Ow. Oh, you all right? Yeah, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm too tall for this shit. Max, what do you think of the secret tunnel? It's pretty secret and cool. Showtime. I was literally gonna say this. You're angry? Piss! I'm part way. Dude, I've waited years to walk up this passageway. I have a bad habit of showing up to front of house super early before I really need to. But on the plus side, I do get to enjoy a little bit of the previous act. In this case, it was Ganja White Knight, and uh, kind of got to get a feel for what it's like to actually watch a show at Red Rocks. Uh, this is the part of the video where I cherry pick a few of my favorite moments from the show to showcase them to you. If you want to see longer or even in some cases full-length versions of these videos, be sure to check out my Patreon in the description below. I do upload uh, all the cool shows that I do. Now, maybe not all my corporate stuff, but um, definitely all of these kind of landmark shows. I do record them and I will be uploading them as they happen. And if you're curious about anything else in this video, uh, down in the description you'll find all sorts of stuff. And thank you to everybody on the crew, both seen and unseen, who helped make these shows go on. First and foremost, thank you to Josh, aka Zomboy, and congratulations to him for selling out a headlining Red Rocks show. That's amazing. I can't even imagine how that feels. Max for being our tour manager slash adult babysitter. Eric for designing this ground package that was a blast to drive. Connor, also known as Dead Philly, for taking so many awesome photos and videos for this show and many others. Jeremy Jones for creating some of the awesome content you see on the screens during the show as well as playing it back. And thanks to all of you who have been supporting me in this journey of mine for years now. I really appreciate you guys understanding my upload schedule. Oh, all right, there's our transport. So I wanted to say thank you for watching the video. It means a lot to me that you guys have supported me in this little journey. I'm getting a little emotional because this is my first Red Rocks show and I've wanted to play Red Rocks for years. Since I think I watched that Skrillex live stream where he had the Mothership tour where he like lifted up on a platform. Anyways, ever since I saw that show, I knew I wanted to play Red Rocks. I say play like I actually played anything, but to do a show there and 
finally happened yesterday on DMX day, no less. And um, yeah, the guys are loading up down there and I gotta get down there. So thanks for watching, see you in the next video.